Thanks for joining me again at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel that saves our soul today, that is only found in Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now, when we believe the gospel of the grace of God, what happens? Well, first of all, we must believe the gospel of the grace of God, not the gospel of the kingdom, right? Well, here's the gospel of the grace of God, which is only found in Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, in your King James Authorized Version. This station is also not only dedicated to Paul's My Gospel, but it's also dedicated to God's perfectly preserved word, the King James Authorized Version. Perfect and without error. There is not one error in it. It's 100% accurate, and God perfectly preserved it on the authority of Psalms chapter 12. And also, he puts his word above his own name, Psalm 138.2, as do we on this station. We do not put scholars above God's word. We do not put the Hebrew text above God's word. We do not put the Greek text above God's word. We do not put pastors above above God's Word. We do not put commentaries above God's Word. We do not put dictionaries above God's Word. We put God's Word above His name just as God does in Psalm 138.2. Okay? Hopefully you put His Word above your name too and your pastor and your denomination and your non-denomination and blah 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 blah. Okay? But when you... Here's the gospel of the grace of God. Okay? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2. By which also ye are saved. Okay, did you hear that? By which also ye are saved. So right here, he's declaring unto you the gospel by which you are saved. Okay, you getting that? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And what is that gospel on how you are saved? Verse 3 tells us, for I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture. So that is the gospel of the grace of God. And the other part that you cannot leave out is verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That is the gospel of the grace of God. That is the power unto salvation today. Okay? Well, what about the gospel of the kingdom? Well, what is the gospel of the kingdom? Is it the same as the gospel of the grace of God? Well, let's see what Peter says in Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So clearly, Acts 2, verse 38, gives us definition of what the gospel of the kingdom does for those people back in the New Testament before the Apostle Paul, before Saul of Tarsus gets saved and gets the gospel of the grace of God. That gospel of the kingdom, they are to repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. Nothing about being saved there. It's remission of sins. And then, once they repent and be water baptized, they get their sins remitted and they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Do you get that? Their sins are remitted and they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Nothing about the death, burial, and resurrection. Nothing about being saved. Okay? There is a difference between the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. Okay? Two different dispensations. One is under the New Testament. One is in the revelation of the mystery. One is under a covenant. One is not. One is under the law. One is of grace. One, is a, one was a mystery and one was made known. One was prophecy and one was mystery. One is for Israel, one is for the church, the body of Christ. Clearly, clearly different messages. Okay. So now, what happens when we believe the gospel, the grace of God? How does it work? 
Well, Romans 10, 17 tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And Ephesians 1, 13 tells us what happens when we trust the death, burial, and the resurrection. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, okay, somebody preached the gospel to you, the death, burial, and resurrection, Paul's my gospel. You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which is today in the dispensation of the grace of God, in whom also after that you believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? And that is how you are saved, right? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 2, it's by which also ye are saved, that Christ died for your sin, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Trust that gospel by faith, and you will be saved. And as we go through part four, now that you're saved, as we're going through part four of what does love got to do with it, right? And we, we saw in parts one, two, and three that the definition, the definitions that most commentators and scholars give us have nothing to do with um, the love of the Bible. The, um, most of the translations that we saw make 1 Corinthians 13 the love chapter when, as a matter of fact, in the Bible it's the charity chapter. We also saw that in the new corrupt translations, um, the word charity in some of them is nowhere to be found. And in the most popular ones, like the NASB, it's only found three times, and we're going to go through that today. Where those are found is interesting. So as we continue, how many times is it found in God's perfectly preserved word? Okay, how many times is the word charity found in God's perfectly preserved word? Well, it is found 24 times. And as we go into uh, the mystery, um, into Paul's writings, um, we go into the revelation of the mystery where we're not under the law, we're under grace, we're not under any covenants, we were always strangers of the covenants and the promises, Ephesians 2.12. And we go into the mystery. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1 says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And what's amazing is, is when you look at the NASB and you look at the three times where charity is found in, in the New American Standard Translation, you find it twice in the red letters. Okay, where Jesus said, okay, that's where you find the word charity. And in the NASB, they actually tell you that you have to sell your possessions and give to charity. Now, that is nowhere to be found. The word charity is nowhere to be found in the Old Testament in your King James Authorized Version. I thought that was interesting to notice. They have put the word charity in Jesus' earthly ministry. Why? Because that's where they are. They're building a kingdom, and hey, why not tell them that they have to give to charity too? Because Jesus said so in the red letters. Well, I'm sorry to say, one, Jesus in the red letters was never talking to us. He only came for his own, um, and that's John chapter 1, verse 11, 10 and 11. And his own received him not, okay? That verse is there for a reason. Jesus came to his own, okay? You weren't back there in the Old Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before the cross on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17 is Old Testament doctrine for Israel. Jesus is a minister of the circumcision to confirm the promises of the fathers, Romans 15, 8. And he came to his own and his own received them not. And most of modern Christianity today in America say that Jesus is their king and he's talking to us. When the Bible says Jesus is Israel's king, king of the Jews, and he came for his own, which is Israel. And the friends that he came for is Israel, not you. Okay, So if you're on um, Mark Driscoll's website where Jesus is everyone's friend, that would be wrong too on the authority of God's perfectly preserved word. Okay, Jesus' friends was and only Israel. Okay, Romans 5.10 makes it very clear that we were enemies of God. Okay, But by his mercy, he saved us. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. 
And they also have the word in your New American Standard, the word charity in the book of Acts, which in God's perfectly preserved word, the word charity is not in the book of Acts. It's nowhere to be found. So again, a couple of things that, um, again, I find interesting. You may not, but um, you know, when you're dealing with people who do not know how to study, do not know how to rightly divide, do not believe God perfectly preserved his word, are not mid-acts, are not Pauline, and are not dispensational, it's amazing what you see um, and how these people just follow the leader, a bunch of mice, you know, and you got the guy playing the flute, right? That's what you see in modern Christianity today because no one reads and studies their Bible. And as a matter of fact, nobody wants to know if there is a perfectly preserved word. They just take the pastor's and the scholar's word for it, which is horribly wrong because God is always true and every man is a liar. Romans chapter 3 verse 4 or Romans chapter 4 verse 3. I don't have the verse in front of me, but it's one or the other there. Look it up and you'll see. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13.1, so, and again, this is in the Revelation of the Mystery. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And again, this is the 24 times you find the word charity in the King James Authorized Version. And 1 Corinthians 13.2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Charity suffereth long, and is in kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Verse, and 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Charity never faileth. Okay? Love faileth, guys. Charity never does. Okay, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a relationship and, um, you know, you broke up. You were in love, now you're not. Well, didn't that just fail? Love faileth, charity never faileth. But where there be prophecies, prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. So he tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, prophecies will fail and tongues will cease. How many years ago was that when 1 Corinthians 13, 8 was, was written? It's as if it was never written, right? Hey, you can go to Gregory Dickow's church, which is right around the corner from me here. And um, they talk in tongues there. Hey, you can go to KJ Ministries Online, which is part of Bethel Ministry. They call themselves prophets. I guess 1 Corinthians 13, 8 is not in their new translation. I don't know. It makes it very, God makes it very clear here that prophecies will fail and tongues will cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophecy. Now notice, as I'm reading all these words about charity, you're not going to find the one in Luke chapter 12, verse 33, that you find in your New American Standard that says, sell all your possessions and give to charity. Okay? The King James Authorized Version, God's perfectly preserved word, never tells you to give to charity. It tells you to be charitable. Okay, that, that's two different things. Okay, what does um, Paul say in 2 Corinthians? How are we to give? We are to give when we purpose in our heart. Okay, that has nothing to do with giving to charity. Okay, purposing in your heart what you want to give is according to right doctrine. Okay, not according to necessity when they put you back in Malachi under the Old Testament in Israel's program and tell you the church, the body of Christ, is robbing God and telling you that you have to tithe every week, that's out of necessity. The Bible tells us not to do it out of necessity, but to purpose it in our heart in the dispensation of the grace of God. So make, make sure you understand the difference between um, our giving today in the dispensation of the grace of God as the church, the body of Christ, versus Israel's um, tithing, okay? Because Israel's tithing, they had three 10% tithes, and there's a tithe in Deuteronomy 14, the lust tithe, where you can actually use all your tithe on yourself 
that's a tithe that they don't teach you. Okay, yes, there is a tithe that Israel can spend money on themselves. And that's one they'll never teach you. And then they'll never teach you the other um, ten, the other two 10% tithes that was always and is for Israel. And it's just absolutely ridiculous that um, Malachi makes it very clear that it's, um, you know, you're putting people back under the curse. And we know in Colossians that Jesus Christ became a curse for us. So don't let these law teachers put you back under the law. That's what Galatians is all about. Okay, you need to use the exit sign and get out of there because they are the ones who are robbing God if you want to take that out of context and put it onto them, not you. And they're manipulate, manipulating you and they're just um, hanging the carrot in front of you. The carrot and the stick is what they're doing to get you to do their work. Okay, if, you, if you've ever noticed at these denominational, non-denominational mega churches, okay, I was part of one at Harvest Bible, they always tell you that if you give, God will bless you. But when you really look at it, they're the ones getting blessed, right? Your tithes and offerings that you shouldn't even be given, but they're telling you you have to because God will bless you and, you know, they put you under Old Testament Israel's blessing and cursings and tell you you're robbing God, which is all Israel's doctrine. Because they manipulate you, they're the ones getting blessed. They're the ones putting their kids through college. They're the ones getting the fat 401k because of your tithes and offerings. If they were teaching Pauline doctrine, their church would be very small. Because it would be all doctrinal, it would be all Bible, and not their manipulation tactics. But anyway, I'm getting off base here. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. And 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all your things... Let all your things be done with charity. Okay? Notice, it doesn't say give to charity. Colossians 3.14 And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. So charity is the bond of perfectness. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 3.6 But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we always to see you. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.5 Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of good conscience and of faith unfeigned. 1 Timothy 2.15, Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. 1 Timothy 4.12, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. 2 Timothy 2.22, Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 2 Timothy 3.10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. Titus 2.2, That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. And now according to the New Testament, okay, that was all according to the revelation of the mystery. All of Paul's writings are according to the revelation of the mystery. Now we're into the New Testament with 1 Peter 4.8. And again, charity is not found in the Old Testament, okay? And above all things, or in the book of Acts, in the King James Authorized Version. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. 1 Peter 5.14. Again, this is Israel's doctrine now. Okay, This is not doctrine for the church of the body of Christ. We can go to the New Testament for definition. We can go to the um, New Testament for historicity. Okay? But for actual doctrinal application, we cannot. Okay, We'd be using the Bible in unrighteousness, and ultimately you'd probably hurt the, the church, the body of Christ, because you're putting them back under the law, which the law was never given to the church, the body of Christ. It was only given to Israel. In the Old Testament, Exodus 19, and in the New Testament, Ezekiel 
36, Jeremiah 31, and Hebrews chapter 8 defines that for us. Okay, And by the way, the law and the covenant, the definition of the law and the covenant is found in Exodus 34, um, 28, I believe. Again, I don't have that verse in front of me. I apologize. But, it, but if you look in Exodus 34, you will find the definition of the Old Testament, which is the Ten Commandments. Okay? So with that being said, we are in the New Testament. This is Israel's doctrine. This is what they have to do to endure through the tribulation. Because 1 Peter, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, Jude is all about them going through the tribulation. Hebrews is all about what the Hebrews, what Israel gets, um, the New Testament promises based on Jesus Christ dying on the cross, just as Romans is all the promises based on Jesus dying on the cross for the church, the body of Christ, okay? In the dispensation of the grace of God. So anyway, um, 2 Peter 1, 7, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Um, 3 John 1, verse 6, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Okay, Israel's program is all about doing well. Israel's program is all about being the light of the world. Israel's program is all about the law in their hearts, um, not being taught anymore, um, being able to drink every deadly poison like it says in Mark 16. Um, that's what God has given them with the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, right? We just read the gospel of the kingdom, right? Repent, be baptized for remission of sin, and then receive the Holy Ghost. Okay, once they get the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, now they're able to endure that tribulation that the Antichrist is going to put them through. Okay, Psalms 23, right? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's exactly them going through the tribulation. Okay, that's not um, the famous funeral chapter. No, that's Israel going through the tribulation. Okay. And that's not you walking through the shadow of death today. Okay, today we are in a, in a present evil world. Okay, we're not in the shadow of death. Okay, big difference between Pauline truth and Israel prophetic truth. Okay, and you have to be able to discern that. You have to rightly divide that. Be a workman who needs to be approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2.15 Anyway, Jude 1.2 these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water, carried about winds. Trees whose fruit were with earth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. And then Revelation 2.19. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Note, does the word charity attach itself to evil like the word love? We went through, you know, in part two, a lot of the things um, the Bible talks about, about the word love. And you can love vanity, you can love evil. Charity never says that in your Bible. Okay, and the other thing I want to point out too is, we just went through 24, 24 verses that have the word charity that you will not find in the New American Standard. We just went through 24, 24 verses on the word charity and you will not find any of those in your New International Version. We just went through 24 verses of the word charity, and you will not find them in your New Century Version. We just went through 24 verses on the word charity, and you will not find them at all in the New King James Version. We just went through 24 verses on the word charity, and you will not find them in your New American Standard. You will not find them in your New Living Translation. Well, I mean, it's, it doesn't surprise me because all the people that back those translations up, the corrupt Roman Catholic Sinaiticus Vaticanus text, are the ones that say God lost his word, God lost the originals. So it doesn't surprise me that they lost the word charity too. So does the word charity attach itself to evil like the word love? No. Charity edifieth. And if they have not charity, I become a sounding brass. If I have not charity, I am nothing. If I have not charity, it pro profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Char charity envieth not. What does love do? Love 
loves vanity. Charity envieth not, right? Charity vaunteth not itself. But love, you can love vanity, you can love evil, is not puffed up. Charity never faileth, but love can. Greatest of these is charity, not love. Follow after charity, not love. Let all your things be done with charity, not love. Now the end of the commandment is charity, not love. Out of a pure heart and of good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Flee also youthful lusts. Remember, you can love vanity and evil, right? But follow righteousness, faith, and charity. That wouldn't make any sense, right? Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, and love. But we, we saw in the Old Testament that you could love evil, that you could love vanity. So how are you going to flee useful lusts if you're not charitable? But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience, and then in the New Testament, right, from Hebrews to Revelation, fervent charity, Charity shall cover the multitude of sins. It's a kiss of charity. Brotherly kindness, charity. Witness of thy charity before the church. I know thy works and charity and service. If Israel is using a corrupt text, Christ will not know them. Revelation 2.19 does not contain the word charity in most new translations. What does it say? I know thy works and charity in Revelation 2.19. I know thy works and charity and service. So if Israel's using a corrupt text, Christ will not know them because Christ knows them by their works, their charity and service, not by their works and love and service. Christ won't know them then. That's a scary thing. These new translations are hopelessly scary, sad, and scores of millions of people are being misled by them. I hope you're seeing that on the station because that's what this station is dedicated to. That's what this website is dedicated to. It's dedicated to Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. It's dedicated to Pauline doctrine. It's dedicated to mid-Acts dispensational King James right division. Okay, And when you become a Bible believer, you believe that the King James authorized version is God's perfectly preserved word like I do. Okay, And I think I've given you more than enough evidence on this website to be fully persuaded, Romans 14, 5, then you will be able to stand up for Christianity, which, by the way, is only found in Acts chapter 11. It's never found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The word Christian is only found in Acts chapter 11. And the Apostle Paul lets us know that word. Okay? So it's very important to be a Bible believer. So you can stand up for your faith. Stand up for God's truth. Stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's doing that in all these modern churches? Instead, what they're doing is they're not studying. They're not showing themselves approved unto God. They're not being workmen who need not to be ashamed. And they're waving their hands at the light bulbs right now, singing songs that mix works with grace and violates Romans 11.6. I mean, that is scary truth, but it's the truth. And what you need to do is you need to preach the gospel to them, get them saved, start your own ministry, be a minister of reconciliation, because that's what Christ has made you to be. You're an ambassador, okay? You're not a sheep. You're not a flock leader. You're not a disciple, Okay, training up disciples is only found in your New American Standard, which we know is a Roman Catholic corrupt Sinaiticus Vaticanus text and never says it in, King James, in the King James Authorized Version to train up disciples or make disciples. Never says that. That is another agenda-driven, um, man-made thing from the corrupt text. From Westcott and Hort apostate text. Westcott and Hort believed evolution. Westcott and Hort didn't even believe Jesus' miracles were literal. Westcott and Hort didn't believe in the six-day creation. And that's the Greek text most of these scholars follow when they follow the Roman Catholic corrupt text. And it's, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's amazing to me. 
because people do not want to study. And I know that as a fact because when I became a Bible believer, when I became a mid-Acts, Pauline, dispensational, right divider of my King James authorized version, I went to these people and I had asked them that I would be, um, if they would give me the time to teach them what I have learned. And they told me that they are not interested. And what has happened, because they're not interested, they're in the same place I left them four, five years ago. They're still waving their hands at the, at the lights. They're tithing. They're water baptizing. And they're not preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. They're not making sure, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9, that all men will see what is the fellowship of the mystery. And they're not being good stewards of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. They're all Israel. They think they're in a flock. They think they're sheep. And you know what? Just like it says in Old Testament Israel's doctrine, they're sheep heading for the slaughter. Because I think most are not saved. Most are trusting their works plus grace. And that's a violation of Romans 11.6, a violation of Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, where they frustrate the grace of God and they make the cross of Christ of none effect. Anyway, as we come to a close, clearly charity is the greatest, as well as God's perfectly preserved word, the King James Authorized Version. In closing, we look at Webster's Dictionary. And like I said, we can get um, definition of charity right out of the Bible, but I like to go to Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The 1828 Dictionary is before all these corrupt translations came out. And if you pick up a copy of the Webster's Dictionary, which we always go to for definition after we go to God's perfectly preserved word, you'll even see Bible verses in there, and you can even read Noah's um, Noah Webster's um, testimony in there, and then after you read it, email me and let me know if you think Noah Webster was saved, because he does not give a clear presentation of the gospel of the grace of God. So that's just another question that's always raised to me. You know, this guy, yes, he knows some Bible, but did he understand the gospel, the grace of God, with clarity? That is why this website is about and around, because most do not. Most mix Israel's program with the mystery program, the prophecy with the mystery. Unfortunately, that is leading a lot of souls to hell, and this station is dedicated to get people saved. So Webster's definition, charity, in a general sense, Love, benevolence, goodwill, that disposition of heart which inclines men to think favorably of their fellow men to think favorably of their fellow men and to do them good. Okay? Nothing about giving to anybody, right? Giving to charity or, you know, all right, benevolence, right? Goodwill. Basically helping people that are really down and out, okay? That isn't necessarily a charity. That could be your neighbor. You know, that could be somebody in the Section 8 housing, right? But you probably stay clear of them, right? Now, what does love say? The sense is probably to be prompt, free, willing, from leaning, advancing, or drawing forward. In a general sense, to be pleased with. So love sounds like it's all about yourself, right? To regard with affection on account of some qualities with which excite pleasing sensations or desire of gratifications. We love a friend on an account of some qualities which gives us pleasure in his society. We love a man who has done us a favor, right? It's always what's been done for us. In which case, which charity is the opposite. In which case, gratitude enter, enters into the composition of our affection. It's always about our affection. Charity is never about our affection. It's about what we can do for others. Clearly, you could see just the difference in love and charity just in Webster's definition as well as the King James Authorized Version. We love our parents and our children on account of their connection with us. It always has to do with us, love, right? And on account of many qualities which please us. We love to retire to a cool shade in the summer. We love a warm room in winter. We love to hear an eloquent advocate. We love to wave our hands at the light bulbs and sing mixed up worship songs, mixed up doctrine. We love 
to hear our pastor say long prayers that make God a gopher and a beggar, right? God, give me this. God, bless me with that. God, as if God didn't bless you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We love to retire. The Christian loves his Bible. In short, we love whatever gives us pleasure and delight, whether animal or intellectual. And if our hearts are right, we love God above all things. Are our hearts right? What does Jeremiah 17, 9 say? So if our hearts aren't right, don't you think we should get on board with God's heart? What do you think? Or are we going to follow our hearts? Jeremiah 17, 9 says our hearts are desperately wicked. Genesis 6 says our hearts think about evil continually. I don't know. I lo our, and if our hearts are right, well, we know they're not. We love God above all things as the sum of all excellence and all the attributes which com communicate happiness to intelligent beings. So we would love God above all things as long as it brings us happiness. In other words, the Christian loves God with the love of complacency in his attributes, the love of benevolence towards the interests of his kingdom, and the love of gratitude for favors received. And again, this is Noah Webster's dictionary. And again, where's, where's the love according to Noah Webster? It has to be towards the interest of the kingdom. Okay, It's not toward the interest of the church, the body of Christ. And hopefully that screams out to you. But for the most part, Webster does see the difference. Do you? Okay, charity is always about others, never us. Love is us and others. Love is mostly, in my opinion, it's us. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So hopefully this study will help you to understand that we are to be charitable. Loving, yes, but charitable is the greatest. Charitable Charity is what God is looking for in us. Charity is what God is looking for in Israel. Romans 14, 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. I'm fully persuaded that the greatest of the, of the two words, love and charity, the greatest is charity. I'm a Bible believer. I believe the King James Authorized Version is God's perfectly preserved word. The word charity is in God's perfectly preserved word 24 times. Every other translation, three at the most. It is sad but true. They have changed the text to meet their own agenda. They will tell you, most pastors in America today that teach at these denominational, non-denominational mega churches will tell you, that the theme of the Bible is God's love. I'm here to tell you that it's not. Thanks again for listening. Email me at buttonowministry at gmail.com or you can go on my other station at buttonowministry.org. That's my other YouTube station. You can also um, go on my website at www.buttonow.com ministry.wix.com slash but now ministry thanks again for listening and um, my hope is that you are a bible believer not a new translation seeker thanks again